Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund, and I'm currently a graduate mechanical engineer on the Nuclear Graduates Programme. Today is Wednesday, the 14th of June, 2023, and I'm here to give you your Fusion News update. Under the key headlines for today's episode. One, US announces $46 million in funds to eight nuclear fusion companies. Two, German startup wins initial funding for revolutionary fusion energy machine. Three, Zap Energy unveils innovative methods to quantify fusion energy gain. Four, General Atomics and Tokamak Energy announce collaboration regarding high temperature superconducting magnetic technologies. And make sure you stay till the end, as yet again I have lots of bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. One, US announces $46 million in funds to eight nuclear fusion companies. First up today is the news from the US Department of Energy the eight different fusion companies located in seven different states will receive a portion of the $46 million in funding. Commonwealth Fusion Systems, Focused Energy, Princeton Accelerators, Rialta Fusion, Tokamak Energy, Type 1 Energy Group, Eczema Energy and Zap Energy are the companies that were successful in their application and passed the rigorous merit review process, all of whom are members of the Fusion Industry Association. It is important to note that full payment is reliant on companies delivering results and verification of the science by a public program. So hopefully we'll see a lot of exciting developments in coming years. The funding, which comes from the Energy Act of 2020, is part of the Energy Department's milestone-based fusion development program, which hopes to develop pilot-scale demonstration of fusion within a decade, and is the US's bid to solidify their position within the fusion ecosystem. US Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, stated regarding this news, we have generated energy by drawing power from the sun above us. Fusion offers the potential to create the power of the sun right here on earth. The Biden-Harris administration is committed to partnering with innovative researchers and companies across the country to take fusion energy past the lab and towards the grid. If you wish to know more in detail about the specifics related to each company, there's lots more information on each of their respective company websites. Two, German startup wins initial funding for revolutionary fusion energy machine. Second up, we have some more funding news brought to us this time by the Financial Times for Fusion Industry Association member Proxima Fusion, a Munich-based fusion startup. Their pre-seed funding round has secured them 7 million euros, which is significant considering the company was only incorporated in January. It's a spin-out from the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, which is home to what is currently the world's most advanced existing accelerator. This fusion device design has been mentioned previously on this channel, but to briefly remind you, it's a magnetic fusion-based design, similar to a tokamak, but with a more twisted and complicated structure. Put simply, a tokamak is kind of easy to design, hard to operate, whereas a accelerator is super hard to design but once you've designed it, it's way easier to operate, as was stated by Ian Hogarth, co-founder of Plural Platform, which is leading the 7 million euro investment alongside Germany's UVC partners. The close relationship between Proxima and the Institute means that many previous years of accelerated design and expertise in plasma physics can be drawn upon. So I look forward to hearing more about this company as they continue to grow. Three, Zap Energy unveils innovative method to quantify fusion energy gain. Our next story is about a paper that was released in the Journal of Fusion Science and Technology, where Fusion Industry Association member Zap Energy has defined its methodology for measuring and calculating net energy gain, also referred to as Q. The difference about their sheared flow stabilised Z-pinch fusion plasmas is that, as well as the magnetic confinement, which is similar to other designs, it also incorporates externally driven plasma flow, which has to be incorporated in the formulation for Q. To explain the calculation in a very simple manner, plasma properties can be measured to determine Q, in part by calculating their triple product. This is how hot a plasma is, how dense it is, and how long it lasts. It's increased, then so does Q. Zap plan to correlate this with measurements of how many neutrons are emitted, as they're a key product from fusion reactions, it's expected that the number emitted will increase when plasma conditions are ideal and reduce when they aren't. To put this into perspective a little, the plasma in Zap's design is apparently 100,000 times denser and several microseconds longer lasting than other fusion technologies, which should lead to a higher Q. You can read the full journal article on the journal website if you're interested in the more technical details. 
specific to ZAP's fusion approach that I haven't been able to go to in this video. Four, General Atomics and Tokamak Energy announced collaboration regarding high temperature superconducting magnet technologies. Our final story today is news from Fusion Industry Association member Tokamak Energy and General Atomics that they have signed a memorandum of understanding to collaborate in the area of HTS magnet technology. The magnet fields are generated by passing electrical currents through electromagnetic coils around the plasma. Improving how powerful these magnets are is crucial as this would allow the coils to be made thinner and still generate denser plasma. Effectively, what this would mean is an improved cost effectiveness driven by a smaller fusion device footprint and greater efficiency. Anantha Krishnan, Senior Vice President at General Atomics, spoke of the collaboration agreement and said, GA is excited to collaborate with Tokamak Energy on HTS magnets. Tokamak Energy is a leader in HTS magnet modeling, design and prototyping, and GA has expertise in developing and fabricating large scale superconducting magnets for fusion applications. Tokamak Energy has been developing high temperature superconducting magnets for over a decade. And earlier this year, built a set that will be assembled and tested in their Demo 4 facility next year. General Atomics have been operating the D3D National Fusion Facility for the US Department of Energy since the 1980s, where research has not only produced hundreds of peer reviewed articles, but had a significant influence on the design of ITER. Evidently, both companies have had many years of HDS experience, so I look forward to seeing the results of this collaboration in the future. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. Firstly, I wanted to point you in the direction of a great paper from the University of Warwick in the Nature Journal related to the news that was brought to us from the National Ignition Facility late last year. The extreme conditions from their experiment has shed new light on the properties of highly compressed matter in compression-driven ionisation process. This is essential to understanding not only fusion energy, but also the structure of giant planets and stars. I would definitely check out the article if that sounds interesting to you. I found it to be a really great read. Next up, I wanted to mention a webinar that I watched a few weeks ago that was put on by ASSYSTEM. It was called Developments in UK Fusion Energy, Skills, Industry and State of Play. There were two panels, including people from across the UK fusion industry, which made for some really interesting discussions. You can watch the full webinar at the link that I popped down in the description below. My third bonus is a piece on HPC Wire titled The Grand Challenge of Simulating Nuclear Fusion, an overview with UKAA's Rob Ackers. This is an overview of an ISC focus session where attendees were given an overview of digital twin efforts towards fusion by Rob Ackers, UKAA's Director of Computing Programs. So definitely make sure to check that one out. And last but not least, is episode 119 of the Cleaning Up podcast held by Michael Liebreich, where in this episode, he speaks to Dr. Anika Khan, a research fellow in nuclear fusion at the University of Manchester. They speak about some of the challenges facing scientists in the industry, particularly on the topic of materials. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. And if you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses that were mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.